When I think of Adobe Premiere, I think about constant crashing, render errors when using Lumetri Color on the clips, subpar software operating system and hardware optimization, and dynamic link issues just to name a few. This month, Adobe came out with the 2019 update of Premiere Pro. These new features actually seem to be pretty impressive. I didn't see much on the above concerns, but I'm hoping that these will be addressed quietly in the background. Now let's go over the features that I found to be the most useful. Number one is Project Rush. This is a new video editing app for mobile that Adobe has created to ease the editing process for online video creation. Adobe Rush has a mobile application as well as a desktop application. Second new feature is something called Display Color Management. This allows you to get accurate color representations and maintain color fidelity across your workflow from After Effects to Premiere Pro on Rec. 709, Rec. 202, and P3 displays. What this means in English is basically your colors will stay consistent between Premiere and After Effects. All you gotta do is go into Preferences, the General tab, and then click this checkbox. Next feature are some performance improvements. Hardware-based encoding and decoding for H.264 and HEVC improves performance on MacBook Pro workstations, and improved image processing delivers more responsive playback, rendering, and Lumetri color performance. Next, you can be excited about some expanded format support. New native format support includes ProRes RAW, ARRI Alexa LF, Sony Venice version 2, and the HEIF capture format that's used by the iPhone 8 and the iPhone X. Next addition is something called selective color grading. Check it out. If you click on any clip, you can now go into the new hue and saturation curves inside of the curves tab and you see all of these new options regarding color curves. We're just gonna focus on these first three curves in this tutorial. For each curve, you're able to pick a hue and apply an effect to that specific hue. Are you confused? I'm gonna show you in an example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the hue versus saturation graph. We're gonna use the color picker and we're gonna click on the leaves. And we wanna make these leaves more saturated, more green. What we see is that the color of the leaves have been selected in the graph and we're gonna pick the middle point and we're going to raise it up. The higher we raise it, the higher the saturation for that specific color will be raised. Perfect, as you can see, the leaves are greener. So what we wanna do as well is we wanna actually raise the saturation of this red color. But before we do that, we want to actually save this Lumetri color and add another one on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click, rename, and we're gonna name this tree leaves just for the sake of organization. And then we're gonna go and click into here and we're gonna do add another Lumetri color effect. So then we're gonna still use hue versus saturation. We're gonna click on the eyedropper and we're gonna click on the car now. And as you can see, the red color has been selected in the graph and we're gonna select the middle point and we're gonna raise the saturation up on this one as well. Perfect. We're gonna go and we're gonna rename this Lumetri effect and we're gonna call this red car. And what this does is it just separates each effect that we do. And if you go over to the effects controls panel, you can see that each of these effects have been saved as its own Lumetri color effect. First one is tree leaves. The second one is red car. I'm gonna undo everything now. So we're now gonna go into the hue versus hue graph. And I'm gonna show you how you can change any color into any other color. So we're gonna click on the car again, and we're gonna click on the middle point and we can literally change the red hue to any other color that we want in the Y direction. So how about we change it to green? It's pretty cool. So the last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to isolate the color of the red car so that everything else is desaturated but the red car. We're then gonna leave the middle point alone and we're gonna just drag all of the other points down so that every other color, every other hue is desaturated except this red hue, which stays saturated to the normal amount. It's that simple. I'm gonna undo that. Hue versus Luma is just exactly how it sounds. You can click on any hue. Let's click on the red car again, and you can control the lumosity of that red. You can make it really bright or you can make it really dark. It's a pretty effective tool. These new hue saturation curves Give them a try and tell me what you think. Next, this update has introduced Intelligent Audio Cleanup. This allows you to instantly dial down or remove background noise or reverb with the new denoise and de-reverb sliders in the Essential Sound panel. I right now have a clip in my timeline. What I'm gonna now go, now I'm now gonna go into my audio tab and I'm gonna click on Dialogue. I'm gonna have a listen at what this sounds like without any effects on it. You want a camera that's affordable, but not so affordable that it's functionally useless. There's a lot of reverb and there's some background noise as well. So first let's try the 
Let's try cleaning up the background noise. First, I'm going to click into repair and then I'm going to click reduce background noise and I'm going to see what it has done so far. It's affordable, but not so affordable that it's functionally useless. Let's try it again. Camera that's affordable, but not so affordable that it's functionally useless. Okay, so you don't want to do it too much or else you're going to start getting a, a robotic sound, but it actually worked pretty well. We're going to go into reduce reverb now and see how that works on it as well. That's affordable, but not so affordable that it's functionally useless. All right, it's not perfect and it might require a little bit more adjustment, but you can already tell the power that these two new effects have. And lastly, there's greater control in the world of data-driven infographics, motion graphics templates in After Effects and Premiere. You're now able to drag and drop spreadsheets into new infographic motion graphic templates to generate animated visualizations. Any updates to your spreadsheets are automatically updated on your infographics. I've never in my life needed to use this feature, but I'm sure there's someone in this world that does. And that's a wrap for the new 2019 Premiere Pro update. Let me know what you think. Guys, thanks for watching, and as always, keep it chill.